a wedding in Tiantai, Zhejiang province, takes us back in time. The traditional wooden items in the wedding, such as the sedan chair and boxes, are hardly ever seen today. Every element of this traditional wedding began over 100 years ago in the Yangtze River Delta. Today, the bridal sedan chair has been replaced by a car and the fancy hall, a living room. If the area's wooden homes could speak, they would tell the stories of our grandmothers and mothers. The mountains in the Yangtze River Delta are low but beautiful, and the rivers are shallow but crystal clear. Locals have mainly subsisted on agriculture for generations, the foundation of the traditional villages in the area. The people are hard workers and maintain high standards at home. Their weddings are always lively affairs. There's a local custom called the mile-long red dowry. It's a splendid occasion in which the bride is born to her wedding accompanied by a grand procession of gift bearers. Though seldom seen today, it was once a familiar sight in the village. At Da Jiahe Town, Ninghai, Red Dowry Art Museum preserves memories like these. He Xiaodao, curator of the museum, takes an object such as tablets, headboards, eaves, window frames, and boxes. He Xiaodao has amassed a huge collection of wooden articles related to the Red Dowry custom. After cleaning, the broken pieces go to the museum's carpenter. He Yuejun is deaf and dumb, but he is an expert at restoring such relics. One does the collecting, and the other the repairing. They are bringing red dowry furniture back to life. The traditional red dowry includes ordinary household items, ceremonial pieces, and tools. He Xiaodao has a full set of red dowry articles in his museum. The family provided a full set of red dowry articles when a daughter was getting married. Everything was red because red is considered auspicious. Wealthy families needed a large team to carry the dowry items. Wood is the most accessible material in the area. In the past, everything was made of wood. The various wooden items in the red dowry will accompany the bride throughout her life. Despite their ordinary functions and origins, all the items were painted with cinnabar and decorated with gold. Yeah. 
那这个是小姐床，清对晚期的，哪一个民俗的女孩子得到了如此的待遇？你欧洲的王宫里面给公主的床也没有我们这么漂亮，这就是文明的一个高度。Cinnabar and gold furniture represent the finest of the furniture of ordinary people. The red dowry of a family represented their status and how much they loved their daughter. Collecting and repairing red dowry furniture helps keep the culture and memories of our ancestors alive. He Xiaodao and He Yuejun have been working together for 30 years and restored over 10,000 furniture pieces and overcome many communication obstacles. The pieces they've collected represent different styles and come from many areas and periods. The complex pieces need to be properly identified before restoration. They don't try to restore the pieces to their original appearance, instead leaving evidence of their work. Wow, It is the feelings and memories that make the red dowry items special. This yard holds the memories of many people. The red dowry articles remind people of their hometown. The red dowry teams no longer travel the ancient lanes. Only the elderly remember brides riding in a bridal sedan chair. Young people are only curious about this ancient custom. Times change. We try to retain some of the charm of the past when the lanes were lined with wooden houses. Grandfather would sit in front of the wooden door. The wooden barrel was full of rice. Nearby was a pair of shoes made by the grandmother and the sound of singing filled the air. These memories are representative of the lives of the people here. There could be nostalgia in a wooden bowl, a symbol of the importance of food, Xiaowo village in Handan, Hebei province, was one of the birthplaces of wood-turning culture in China. Wooden bowl making has a history of over 500 years here. The ancient lathe and cutters are operated by foot pedals. The sawdust blooms like flowers, falling on the ground and adding color to the lively song. It's harvest season for wheat, and migrant worker Li Xuemin returned to Xiaowo village. He has come from the city to prepare to revive the traditional Xiaowo wooden bowl craft during his vacation. 40-year-old Li Xuemin and his wife work in construction in Tianjin, but he looks totally different in his home village. Villagers at Xiaowo regard themselves as the descendants of Lu Ban, an ancient carpenter, who is said to be the inventor of the lathe for making wooden bowls. Just like their ancestors, the villagers continue to revere Lu Ban to this very day.
but people in the village no longer understood the ancient technique. So Li Xuemin launched a project to revive the tradition of the Xiaowo wooden bowl. Eighty-seven-year-old Cheng Jinqing is among the few people that understand the wood-turning technology, and he taught Li Xuemin. Yeah, Chen Dinqing is an expert at making the most out of his raw materials. Since 2014, Cheng Jinqing has been using his wood lathe to produce wooden bowls, making money while also getting some exercise. Wooden bowls are very utilitarian articles. Wooden bowls have been found dating back 7,000 years. They are very durable and can last for many years. Making the bowls requires good coordination. It is difficult at first, but once you grasp the basics, you gradually become more proficient. A skilled carpenter can make five similar bowls from a single piece of wood. They know what shape they want and make full use of the wood. Xiaowo bowls were famous in the late Qing dynasty. People came from all around to buy the bowls, and the villagers made them in their spare time. They also made other small wooden objects, such as rolling pins and spoons on their home lathes. The articles made in Xiaowo village sold well, but the villagers eventually abandoned the craft. Seven years ago, Li Xuemin noticed that wooden articles were popular in the cities, so he began encouraging older villagers to resume the craft. As in most Chinese villages, most of the young people don't live in Xiaowo village year-round. They only return to their home village during the harvest season. The villagers all help each other to bring in the harvest. <laughs> Li Xuemin's father passed away early this year. Only he and his daughter work on the harvest this year. Li has to work outside the village while also doing the farm work. Now he also wants to again make Xiaowo wooden bowls. Li Xuemin's grandfather knew how to make the bowls, but Li Xuemin never learned the skill. The craft that only existed in the memories of the villagers is now returning to Xiaowo village. Yeah. 
The old wood lathe used to make wooden bowls now rests in the yard, abandoned and gathering dust. Almost every family in the village has a few old broken pieces, but they rarely have whole articles. Li Xuemin has collected the wooden pieces from the villagers and emptied the second floor of his house for an exhibition hall. He put up posters explaining the history and production of Shao Wo bowls. Li Xuemin plans to have some bowls on display in his exhibition hall. Adzes and axes are used to turn tree branches into timber. A branch is divided into four pieces along the grain. Each piece is chopped into an oval shape before it is processed on the lathe. A blacksmith is required to make the most important tool, the cutter of the lathe. It is made of an alloy of iron and steel. Not all blacksmiths know how to make them. As fewer people made the wooden bowls, the number of blacksmiths to make the cutters shrank. The blacksmith must make new cutters by copying an existing one. The cutter looks more like a spoon than a knife. A thin piece of steel is attached to the iron and is specially designed for making the bowls. It's been over a week since Li Xuemin left the construction site, and they want him to return right away. But he wants to finish setting up the exhibition hall first. When the operator steps on the sticks, the belt makes the material rotate. With both feet controlling the rotation, the operator holds the cutter with his left hand to control the angle while steadying it with his right hand. First, one cutter hollows out the bowl, then another makes the curve of the arc before a sharp cutter shapes the bottom. After the inside of the bowl is formed, it is held in place to shape the bottom of the bowl to complete the process of making a handmade wooden bowl. Li 
Li Shui-min invites Cheng Jinqing to his exhibition hall, which is now ready for viewing. Over the past seven years, Li Xuemin has been learning from Cheng Jingqing. The two went to a carpentry exhibition where they introduced Shawo village wood turning skills to the whole country. In 2017, Li Xuemin brought an ancient lathe to Los Angeles to participate in the International Wood Turning Annual Conference to introduce Shawo village wood turning to the whole world. After completing his project, Li Xuemin plans to return to work. He comes to his grandmother's home for breakfast the day before returning to the city. The harvest is in and the village has returned to normal. Li Xuemin has taken on the task of reviving the village tradition of working with wood. He hopes that someday he can do this full time thus preserving this important tradition. Like most Chinese, Li Xuemin is very family-oriented. Family is at the core of his life. Society is composed of hundreds of thousands of families. The Chinese character for one tree means wood, two trees represent a small forest, and three trees represent a jungle. Ancient Chinese people cut trees from the forests to build houses, furniture, and other utilitarian items. The wood enabled them to live a peaceful life.